it was meant to be a goodwill trip that strengthened relations between Canada and India and highlighted this country's value as a trading partner. But a week after the Prime Minister's return home, controversy from the visit continues to dog him. The trip grabbed international headlines when Jaspal Atwal, who has been convicted of attempted murder, was invited to an exclusive dinner with Justin Trudeau. B.C. Liberal MP Randeep Sarai initially assumed responsibility for inviting Atwal, but Sarai has now told a newspaper in his province that Atwal was one of the many names he forwarded to the Prime Minister's office, but he didn't actually invite him. Former CBC correspondent Terry Malewski first broke the Atwal story. To unpack all of this, we have invited him to join us from Ottawa. So, Terry, thanks for making time for us today. Let's begin with Sarai's recent comments to this paper. He's saying, hey, he wanted to come. I just sent the name up the ladder. It really isn't my fault. But ultimately, does that make any difference? Should Atwal have been there? No, it doesn't make any difference at all. I think that uh, the problem with the Sarai interview is that uh, there's really no story in it, and they had to think of a headline. So the headline said that uh, he says he didn't invite Atwal. He merely put him on the guest list. What's the difference, please? I don't think there is one. I think really this interview is a bit of trivia. The fact is he put him on the guest list. That was what was alleged. It's true. So let's talk about the Liberals, because now we've still heard the Prime Minister standing by... Um, his argument that he had been given information that there were rogue elements within the Indian government that actually wanted Atwal at these events to embarrass Canada. How is that explanation holding up for you? Well, uh, it's not holding up very well, is it? I mean, there are two obvious reasons. The first is the invitation. Uh, the invitation was not issued by shadowy low, rogue elements in the Indian uh, security services. The invitation came from the uh, Canadian High Commissioner in New Delhi, Nadir Patel. Uh, and it was on the recommendation of the guest list that was submitted, among others, uh, by Randeep Sarai. Uh, so uh, I don't know how the Indian government could, or its agents could, arrange to have the Canadian High Commissioner issue an invitation to his own party. This wasn't an Indian government affair uh, to uh, Jasper Latwal. It's, it's just hard to... Uh, the fact of the matter is, as we've already said, uh, he was invited, he was put on the guest list by a Canadian Liberal MP. Uh, the second problem with the, uh, the Indian plot theory is that it hangs to a large degree upon the idea that, well, why would the Indians have given him a visa? Why was he even allowed into India? Well, the fact of the matter is, and it's very well known, uh, that the Indian blacklist of people not to be given visas ever to go to India was cut way back uh, long ago, uh, starting under the previous Prime Minister, Manmohan Singh, uh, and continuing under the present Prime Minister, Narendra Modi, uh, and that uh, Atwal had been to India several times before. So uh, you can credit the Indian security services for many things, but I don't think they're clairvoyant. I don't think they took Atwal off the list long ago in the anticipation that this might become a possibility. I don't get it at all. Terry, one of the reasons we wanted to speak with you today is because you've written this commentary for CBC called the Atwal effect and nobody's immune for the opposition parties pointing fingers over Sikh extremism is proving to be tricky. Your argument is is that this issue of Sikh nationalism when it's manifested in a violent way has infiltrated Canadian politics up and down across all parties. Tell me about that. Well the, the problem has been afflicting all parties for a very long time. Uh, it's, it's not exclusively a liberal problem. Clearly, the liberals have stepped in it big time this time. Uh, but it's difficult for the other parties to point fingers because uh, during the 10 years of the Harper regime under the Conservatives, for example, um, th they were interested in playing the same game, that is, playing footsie, to quote uh, the former BC Premier Ujjal Assange, playing footsie uh, with the separatist, separatist wing of the Sikh community, which is a very small minority, uh, but nevertheless uh, vocal and uh, powerful politically. Uh, so the Conservatives, I went on both uh, Mr. Harper's trips to India, for example, and he too uh, was uh, the target of lectures from then Prime Minister Manmohan Singh about uh, Canada being soft as the Indians saw it on Sikh separatism. Uh, he traveled uh, and uh, worked with uh, some MPs that were, shall we say, uh, playing nice with the separatists. Uh, and the Indians noticed that. And uh, at one point, in fact, Manmohan Singh, the Prime Minister, refused to do a press conference with uh, Stephen Harper. 
Uh, then, more recently, uh, in the previous, uh, just this week, the Conservatives planned uh, to introduce an Opposition Day motion condemning Sikh extremism and condemning the glorification of those who've taken part in violence. That's a reference to the uh, martyr posters of the Air India bomber that are up at a couple of temples in Ontario and B.C. And uh, then they withdrew that under pressure from the Sikh separatist movement, who said, well, if, if, if you're going to be uh, doing motions in the House of Commons uh, condemning uh, Sikh extremism and terrorism, uh, that's an attack on all Sikhs. Uh, it, it isn't, but that's what they said. And the Conservatives backed down and did not introduce, introduce that motion. So much for the Conservatives. Uh, finally, for the NDP, uh, let's remember that their new leader, Jagmeet Singh, uh, refused uh, five chances when I asked him about the, those same uh, martyr posters to condemn them. Uh, he studiously avoided uh, condemning them and then later on said it wasn't for him to tell the community whether it should take him down or not. So all three of the parties uh, have a problem on this score. It's just most acute right now for the Liberals. You've been covering this particular issue for the better part of three decades. Could you have imagined that this issue that seemingly does not seem very Canadian at all, an idea of a Sikh nationalist state and the extremist elements of that campaign would still be a part of Canadian politics, still be discussed in 2018? Uh, well, the short answer is no. I did not anticipate that it would still be going, uh, lo these uh, 33 years later. Uh, and um, that's because I made the same mistake that a lot of people made. Uh, that is, well, I, I thought it was a very distant problem. It was an Indian problem. There's nothing much to do with Canada. Air India was an Indian plane. Most of the passengers were of Indian descent, although most of them were also Canadian citizens. It was, in a way, kind of written off as being somebody else's problem. And it took a very long time for it to sink in uh, that the bombs were made by Canadians in Canada and placed on the plane in Canada. Uh, and that it was, uh, a, a, and then it began to emerge that really the, the hotbed of separatism anywhere in the world isn't in Punjab, the majority Sikh state in India, but in Canada. Uh, and so it's taken a very long time first to track down uh, the guilty, because uh, the plot was very well uh, conceived and the Canadian authorities didn't do a stellar job, to put it mildly, of uh, being on top of it. Even though they had the bombers under surveillance before the bombing, they were unable to stop it. And even though they had a very good idea who did it after the bombing, uh, they couldn't successfully bring a case. And the leader of the plot, Telvinder Parma, uh, the man with the martyr posters, uh, he fled the country and was killed by the Indian police in 92, so he was never brought to trial. And that's given Sikh separatists a sort of handy way to uh, convince politicians uh, that not to uh, condemn Parma because, you see, he was never convicted. Well, by that standard, uh, we should put up martyr posters for Hitler and bin Laden and every suicide bomber ever, I guess, uh, because they were never convicted. Uh, the fact of the matter is that none of us understood at the beginning uh, that this problem would endure because it was a Canadian and not an Indian problem, or no, I should say not exclusively an Indian problem.